Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Today I'm going to go into some more scenario analysis. So if you've watched a few of my videos, you'll know that I'm a massive, massive, massive fan of scenario analysis and Power BI. It's where you can really start doing some incredibly advanced stuff uh, that actually really adds value to your analysis. Now, this is actually extending a previous video where I've gone into a concept that that I, um, you know, I believe should be out there a bit more in the, uh, bit more widely used in the community, where where you layer multiple scenarios inside uh, your models. And so, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that we want to analyze our information by shocking a number of variables at exactly the same time. And so, if you think about, say, a sales organization, or or an organization which sells something, maybe in a retail store, well. Within that retail store, you can change the price of your goods and see how that impacts your results. You can also change the demand, so maybe the foot traffic or or how many people are actually purchasing your products every day. You can also change the input input cost, right? So maybe you your your commodity, the commodity that you purchase to go and sell, that that reduces in price as well. Well, what I've done in this model is I've set this all up so that I can layer these scenarios on top of each other and I can see what the impact all of these scenarios would have on on my results right um, and then I've set up some visualizations down here which give us an understanding of uh, on how that would actually impact performance now let's actually run through exactly how I actually uh, created this dashboard because I want to show you how you can not only do the calculation but then also create visualizations which showcase it really well so if I jump into my, uh, so so, just obviously you've got to start right from the beginning, right? Um, and up here I've got total sales. Now, this is a, a key point. The only way to achieve this, the only way to achieve this multi-layering of scenarios is you really need to understand iterators really well. So you need to understand the sum x statements because what we need to do is we need to shock the individual variables inside of an iterating function. So if we want to shock uh, or place a scenario over the demand, well, we need to adjust what quantity is bought, right? If we want to um, place a scenario over pricing, like increasing our pricing, then we probably want to, or decreasing, uh, maybe we want to run some discounts. We want to we want to hit this variable here, the unit price. And so um, once we do that, this is what we can actually, this is, and this is exactly how you do it. So and you've got to think the same for cost as well. Now, if I come to this formula here you'll see so it becomes a little bit more complex but it's not actually it's not actually it's just where we are bringing in these multi uh, these these multiple layers of these scenarios right so in this case and this is profits because obviously co uh, uh, profits is going to be derived from total sales and total costs so we are going to increase the demand by uh, whatever variable we place in there, so in this case it's 2%, we're going to increase the price by whatever variable, whatever scenario we overlay there. On the on the cost side, uh, we are going to increase the demand. Obviously, it's got to be the same. If you're if you're selling more, you're, um, you know, you've not only got to increase the demand, but you've got to increase the demand on your cost side. And then we're going to look at our total unit cost down here. Uh, and then we're going to shock that by the cost change. And what's really cool is you probably could, if you want to make this clearer, um, we could say this is the so the sales side of the equation. And this is a really good example of how you should use descriptive um, comments. And this is the cost size of the equation. So I guess that makes it makes it certainly a lot a lot clearer. Just as a reminder, you can actually download this resource. Uh, it just takes a it requires a small investment. You can check out uh, the link down in the description. Okay, so now that we've done that, now that we've done that right, if you think about it, now every single uh, element that we then bring in here is going to alter. It's going to alter the calculation that it does at a particular uh, at a particular row, right? And that's how we get these different results for every single day. Now, 
what I've done from there though is I haven't I've, I've decided well I need I need a different visualization I need I need further information so I want to be able to select any time frame and see what the impact of these um, layers of scenarios do to my results but it didn't actually look very good on a day by day basis it was way too busy right so I want to see how this um, the results of this over time and the best way to do that is cumulatively and so what you can do, and this is where cumulative totals are really awesome, is you can utilize the cumulative total pattern and then just input the initial calc that you've made. So what, what I have done is I've, I've gone and calculated scenario, scenario profits here, but then what I've done is just for the sake of pushing it forward a year because we actually, this is this is just historic information if you think about it, um, just, just because of that's the way I've set up the example. But what I did do is I actually pushed it forward first uh, what have I, where have I done that? I've done it here. So I pushed it forward um, by using date add. So I pushed it into 2017 because of 2016 data. I also did the same for just say a, a budgeting profits. And then what I did is I put them into the cumulative total pattern. And so if you see, um, and, and that's what this showcases here. And what's really cool about this, I think it actually much better represents in a dynamic way how changing any one of these elements can actually affect the overall uh, the overall impact on um, you know results right and so it's, it's, you know, it's seriously cool how you can dynamically go and change any of these and see what results it is so you I mean you could be sitting in a meeting and you could be saying okay well we're going to uh, we we are forecasting so say if say if nothing um, nothing changed maybe, maybe we're forecasting a, a rough time in the economy um, it might spike up uh, the prices of our products by 15 percent and we're also going to see demand change and then what is that actually going to do to our uh, profits? What is it actually going to do to our, our forecasted profits versus what, what, we're, what we're actually budgeting for? So these are the really, I mean, the really, really uh, fantastic things that you can actually, and I'm just changing these as we speak because maybe they're a better way to, um, you know, to view it. This, this is how quickly you can go and run those scenarios across all of your, um, all of your results. Now, the key thing I wanted to go through here was that you know, sometimes running a particular scenario in your reports, you know, just one, uh, shocking one element is not enough, right? And that's where you've got to um, have multiple layers of these scenarios, and you've got to somehow integrate them into your formulas. And then once you're done there, that's not enough. You then have to figure out, okay, well, what's the best visualization? I really like cumulative totals for, for a lot of these things, especially around this sort of um, scenario type uh, buildup. So, you know, that's when you then jump into these patterns or um, into these uh, analytical scenarios or, or, or that, that or patterns of code, basically, that you can utilize over and over again to then go and create these great visualizations. OK, so I'm going to round it off there. Hopefully you can see the, um, you know, the potential here. I mean, there's just so much potential about this multi multi layering of scenarios. Um, I mean, there's, there's even more things that you could do here. I mean, you could mash this in with your marketing, your advertising, uh, your your promotional activities, etc., and see how, you know, you could you can shock all of these things at once and see how that's going to impact the end result. Um, you know, and just and just just thinking aloud here, the other thing you could do here is maybe put in some cards and you could say, OK, well, you know, what's the overall result? So instead of having charts here, maybe we actually want to, um, you know, have a card here which gives us the overall result. We can show the percentage difference, you know, so on and so forth. So heaps of heaps of opportunities around that. Okay, thanks for listening in and hope you enjoy the content. Um, you know, as, as mentioned, you can download this, check out the description below. Um, if, if you didn't like the content as well, uh, you know, really appreciate a like on the video and uh, certainly don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV because uh, I run through uh, some really interesting and, um, and relevant and practical Power BI tips every single weekday. Okay, all the best. Talk to you soon. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.